there are an inordinate amount of resources that are not covered by insurance that are sort of silent costs. So we're taking care of the entire patient and their family. And that's what we have here at the University of Miami and Jackson Memorial Hospital, is we have an interdisciplinary team that meets on a regular basis and provides the patients and their family with resources that can come for one visit and get all the evaluation, diagnosis, and hopefully management in one setting. So truthfully, I'm only one aspect of the treatment of the patient. I may have the most fun aspect of taking care of the patient and to some extent the most rewarding because it's, it's fast. It's rewarding in that a child's born with a cleft lip. Um, the family's adversely affected, the child's adversely affected, and then I get the opportunity to close the lip and it's almost immediate gratification from every level. As you can see from the mom here, it's, you know, the baby goes into the operating room with a cleft lip, she comes out with the cleft lip closed and almost a normal <coughs> So that's a reward that you can't put monetary terms on. Can you describe what a cleft lip is? A cleft lip is basically all the anatomy, all the normal anatomy is there, it's just malpositioned. In other words, this overlying skin is there, the muscle, the orbicularis oris muscle is a sphincter. So if you look when you kiss or you make a fish, you know how the lip comes together? Well, in a cleft lip, because the elements don't come together, they go into the bone or they insert into the bone. So what we do in surgery is we take all these malpositioned elements and we put them back into a normal position. And what does that involve? Is it skin grafts? Is it no, no, it's not skin grafts. We don't have to take anything from somewhere else. We just take everything that's there and we put it in a normal position. We do that with incisions and what we call basically a Z-plasty, where we digitate normal tissue into the abnormal area. And we like to do it, usually we like to do it in one stage, but there are revisions that come along as the child grows. And it's not only the cleft lip that's involved, it's also the nose that's involved. Well, how many more surgeries will she have? Well, she's going to at least have one more surgery because she also has an additional aspect. She has a cleft palate. In other words, the roof of her mouth is also open. The elements have not come together. Now, there's different genetics. Children can be born with a cleft lip. Then there's a variation of cleft lips from incomplete to what we call a form fruist to a complete cleft lip. What it means is, is just how much of those elements are separated. An incomplete is partially put together and a complete, they're completely separated. Then there's a cleft lip and cleft palate, which has different genetics. And then babies can be born with just a cleft palate without a cleft lip. Again, different genetics. How common uh, is this in South Florida or just in general? In general, it runs about one in every 650 live births. So you can do the math. I'm a New York City public school graduate, so I can't tell you how many births there are in one year and you know, divide those out. Um, it's the higher in certain populations. Again, it's thought to be genetics. It's higher in Asians. It's higher in uh, the Latin population. It's higher in um, Native Americans. It's a little less common, about one in 1,200, about one in 1,000 African Americans. So there seems to be a genetic overlay to the entire thing. So in South Florida, with our population, it's, you see it more commonly than you would see it um, in some other demographics. Talk about, I guess, Kimberly's surgery to be specific. Um, when you performed uh, this particular surgery, how long did it take? And um, you know, just kind of describe what you did. Well, Kimberly's surgery is a little bit more challenging because, as I said, there's a variance in, the, in, the, in the how much of a deformity or how much the cleft is. And Kimberly, you can see she's got an exceedingly wide unilateral that's one side of the cleft lip. So it's a little bit more of an issue and a little bit more challenging in doing that. The surgery takes about two and a half to three hours. And again, this is a teaching institution, it's an academic institution, and part of my responsibilities as the chief of division is also to teach our residents and medical students what we're doing. So often, I should say often, there's a little bit extra that goes into doing this. You mentioned that this is all genetics. Um, no, not all genetics. Not all genetics. Genetic. So, and that's what I was going to ask you. Um, her experience that caused her to go into labor early, did that have any, anything to do with, with the deformation? Probably not. The, the, question, the question you're asking about genetics is important because 
one of the things the families always feel when they have a child with a cleft is there's this element of guilt. What did I do to cause it? Is there something I did to cause it? And one of the first questions always asked is, if my child is born with a cleft, do I have a chance of having another child with a cleft? What's the chance? And will this child have a chance of having a child with a cleft? So the answer is, if it's just sporadic, in other words, it just occurred, the chance of them having another child with a cleft are as good as if I had a child, I have no family history of clefts, or you have no family history of clefts, it's sporadic. But if you start having a family history of clefts, it goes up to about 16% chance. And, and the outlook for Kimberly when she's a teenager, when she's an adult, so will there be any physical signs that she She may have a little scar. Um, she should grow up to be a totally normal adult. <coughs> My sympathy, she'll grow up to be a normal teenage female. <laughs> And Anna would like to get you uh, uh, just to, you know, you, you were emotional when I first met you back in January when, you know, you first had your beautiful daughter. She was beautiful before, she's beautiful now, but why was it important for you to... She will be beautiful in the future, too. <laughs> She'll be beautiful in the future, too. I'll include that. Um, why was it important for you to have her undergo this surgery? Well, um, for, her, for her own, you know, good. Like, you know how, you know, you never know, you can't be with them all the time, you know. And, you know, when it goes to school, some kids just don't, you know, don't understand things, you know, the right way. And, and they might tease her, you know, and, and not only because of that, it's make herself feel better, you know. Because she, she might feel like she's an outcast maybe in the future or not, you know, with the cliff. I, I really, in a way, didn't really care if she stayed like that or not. You know, at one point, you know, when she did was, was born, I, I did feel bad. I did feel like, oh, my God, this, this is going to be big for her, like this is going to be stressful for her, but at, at the end, you know, after days passed by, I, and now that she's normal, I kind of actually miss her the way she was in, in before. She had like so much funny facial expressions before, and, but I'm glad she had the surgery. I mean, it's going to be better for her in, in the way of eating too, because it's, it was a little difficult before with the, with the opening of the lip, and I'm pretty sure now with this, she's going to be a little bit more normal in eating, because when it comes to eating, it's, it's a little stressful. But uh, I do what I can for her, and she's, she's a happy baby. You guys had a lot going on uh, when you were, right before you gave uh, birth, or you had your, your chain stolen, and then when you were in the hospital, your house was burglarized. What's going on now? Is everything back to normal? It's um, Somewhat normal. I mean, I'm, I'm dealing with what I have, you know? I can't, you know, ask for nothing more than my blessing that I had. Um, I mean, eventually things will come into place, you know. It's still a little rough, you know, I didn't get everything back, you know. But, you know, it's, everything's material. As long as I have my family and my health, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. At first it was really hard, it was really hard. I was like, oh my God, all these things, I don't have nothing now, you know, but now it's, it doesn't matter anymore. It just, I'm just happy I have my daughter. In Spanish, por favor. Spanish, Dime tu nombre, eh, dilo tu nombre primero, pero dame un segundito, por favor. Excuse me, what does she mean to you? Uh, did anything change after Sorry. the surgery? Uh, after the surgery? Well, just the fact that she was fussy, but you know, it's not she would look for it. I mean, I seen her with her trying to put her tongue out, and and it wasn't the same. I think she knows something's different. You know, she feels it. I know she does. She's not. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Eh, Dino tu nombre y cuéntanos la experiencia que tú has vivido después que la niña fue operada. Eh, bueno, mi nombre es Ana. Eh, ella uh, cuando nació, después que bueno, después que nació, era una sorpresa para mí que ella, a mí no me habían dicho de que ella tenía los labios. Um, separado y después de, de la operación eh, todo de la comida de, de, de dar de comida fue un poquito más difícil ella era muy llorona eh, pero se imagina que ella se siente bien porque está más feliz ella ríe, se ríe más era un poquito difícil para ella comer no y... sí porque por dos semanas hay que darle um, por un un tubito comida y él, ella no le gusta, al principio no, no, no se acostumbraba y lloraba y lloraba y lloraba y 
hasta el final que ella lloraba tanto que, 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 que comía poquito y ya se dormía. Pero ahora se acostumbró y está comiendo bien, hasta, hasta más está comiendo. Un poquito difícil para una madre ver a una niña, a su hijo nacer así en esas condiciones, ¿no? Sí, es difícil porque tú eh, sabes que va a tener que pasar cirugía y uno tiene tantos mal pensamientos. A veces no, no es bueno pensar tantas cosas negativas, pero uno lo piensa que mil cosas pueden pasar y que tal vez no salga, salga del cuarto y uno no quiere pasar eso. Aunque todo el mundo me decía, todo va a estar bien, todo va a estar bien, pero uno todavía tiene esa duda en la cabeza. Cuando viste que tu niña nació en esas condiciones, ¿cuál fue lo primero que te pasó? ¿Que eh, no, el yo problema no se resolvería o algo así? Yo decía, ¿por qué? Yo no, yo no entendía por qué. No sé, así, yo no sabía. Yo, yo solo me preguntaba si fue algo que yo hice. Pero, porque nadie en mi familia, supuestamente como dijo el doctor, que es genético. Pero nadie en mi familia, ni la familia del papá, nadie. Así que yo solo me pregunto, tal vez algo que yo hice, tal vez no me cuidé en algún momento, yo no sé. ¿Qué piensas de Jackson eh, eh, ahora mismo que tu niña ha sido pues, eh, puesta en otras condiciones? Eh, ellos son muy amables, ellos me ayudaron en lo más lo que ellos han podido. Eh, gracias a Lidia también, ellos me ayudaron en tantas cosas, ellos me ayudaron en lo máximo. Yo nunca pensé que iba a tener tantas ayudas. Y lo agradezco mucho a Lidia y al doctor también, que hizo la operación a mi hija. A Mónica también, que es una recepcionista, que siempre me ha ayudado, en la, y siempre la llamo con mis veces a preguntarle mis cosas, pero ellos siempre están ahí cuando neces lo necesito. ¿Doctor en español? ¿Puede hablar español? No, no, no. Hace las entrevistas en español. Ella trabaja con el doctor Sánchez. Ah, ok. Bueno, ok. Sí, porque ella me dice que yo You probably didn't know much about cleft palate or cleft lap before you I got here. I've seen it on TV millions of times, and, and I never would have thought that it would happen to me. You know? and, and what a coincidence, though, that when I was pregnant and I did see that show, I usually get, you know, look at it and get sentimental, but I got, like, extra sentimental with this pregnancy. So, like, in the end, I'm like, I, that's why I got, like, maybe it was a sign or something. Like, I got so crying. My husband came out of the room like, why are you crying when I was pregnant? I'm like, oh, the show. He's like, you need to stop watching those shows, you know? But I'm like, it's reality, you know? It's, you never know. And then it happened to me, you know? The doctors really took time to explain to you what it was. How would you say your whole experience was here at, at, at Jack? It, it was um, a, a big experience. Like I said, it was something that I would never in my life would have thought that I would have to experience. But uh, overall, it's it's overwhelming. And, and at, at the end, I'm, I'm happy that she went through what she's going through. Even though she still needs another surgery, but, you know, I know she's at the end she'll be happy, you know. And all the Jackson people are like so awesome. Like I bug them all the time. <laughs> I like everybody's cell phone number. <laughs> let me let me just get asked about the smiles. You know, after doing this for a long time, even if you look at the pictures of the kids before and after, you can almost see the subtle difference in just the photographs yeah. that the children have a smile on their own faces when you look at them in the photographs because they have difficulty smiling beforehand. The other thing is, this is really a, a, a prime example of the cooperation and coordination between the University of Miami because we are University of Miami faculty and working at Jackson and both Children's Hospital. And that's an advantage that I think a lot of other places don't have that opportunity to be able to have those resources of both the university and Jackson cooperating and taking care of the kids that we have here. And the last but not least is that this is a local issue and for some reason it's a lot more glamorous thinking about going on surgical missions which we do as well overseas but it's an issue that's regional and we really have to sp start using our resources our energy to take care of the kids that are here in South Florida and that's the opportunity that we have here today is to sort of make people aware of that need.